Good morning, children of class 7. I hope you all are doing well. Today, I shall explain to you chapter 4 from the text Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. But before beginning the chapter, let us have a brief recapitulation of the previous chapter where we see Oliver on the streets of London very tired and hungry. There, he happens to meet Jack Dawkins, who was a boy more or less his age, and he introduced himself as Artful Dodger. Jack fed him and took him to Mr. Fagin, who provided him shelter. Mr. Fagin was the head of the Thieves Guild. He used to train small boys the art of pickpocketing through the medium of playing games, which innocent Oliver loved and adapted very quickly. Fagins's experienced eyes saw potentiality in Oliver and so after a few days allowed Oliver to accompany Jack and Charlie to work. In an unnamed street of London, they spotted their victim who was an old man engrossed in reading a book in a bookstore. Oliver watched with horror as Charlie and Dodger sneaked up behind the man and stole his handkerchief. He finally understood the nature of Faggins's work. The vendor of the bookstall alerted the old man about his handkerchief being stolen. Assuming Oliver to be the thief, he raised a hue and cry. Later, the bookstall keeper's statement proved that Oliver was innocent. The old man named Mr. Brownlow sympathized with Oliver's pale condition and decided to take him to his home. Children, this was a brief explanation of chapter 3. Now let us start with chapter 4. Oliver, after being taken to Mr. Brownlow's house, was delirious with fever for a few days. When he woke up, he found Mr. Brownlow's kind housekeeper, Mrs. Bedwin, watching over him. He said that he felt as if his mother had come to sit by him. The story of Oliver's pitiful life brought tears to Mrs. Bedwin's eyes. Once Oliver was strong enough to sit up, Mrs. Bedwin carried him downstairs to her sitting room. A portrait of a young woman caught Oliver's eyes and affected him greatly because the lady had beautiful face but her eyes reflected sadness. Mr. Brownlow at that moment dropped in to see how Oliver was feeling. Oliver thanked him for his kindness and for bringing him to his home and giving him shelter. Brownlow exclaimed with astonishment that Oliver closely resembled the young lady in the portrait. Mr. Brownlow's exclamation startled Oliver so much that the boy again fell ill. After a few days, when Oliver's health was restored, he again entered the housekeeper's sitting room. But now he noticed that the portrait of the lady whom he resembled was gone. Mrs. Bedwin, following his searching eyes, said that Mr. Brownlow had removed it because it seemed to worry Oliver. Oliver was having a comfortable stay at Mr. Brownlow's house. One day, Mr. Brownlow sent for Oliver to meet him in his study. Assuming that Mr. Brownlow meant to send him away, Oliver begged to allow him to stay in his house. Mr. Brownlow assured Oliver 
that he just had called him to hear the story of his life. Before Oliver could begin, Mr. Brownlow's friend Mr. Greenwick arrived. He happened to be a crotchety old man who hinted that Oliver might be a boy of bad habits. Mr. Brownlow bore his friend's eccentricity with good humour. At that moment, Mrs. Bedwin brought in a parcel of books delivered by the bookstall keeper's boy. Mr. Brownlow wished to send his payment and return some books with the boy, but he had already left. Mr. Greenwick suggested that Mr. Brownlow send Oliver, but hinted that Oliver might steal the payment and the books and run away to join his thief friends again. Wishing to prove Mr. Greenwick wrong, Mr. Brownlow sends Oliver to the errand. It grows dark, but Oliver does not return. It is here that the chapter comes to an end. Children, please follow the written explanation that will follow and complete the work given. Thank you, children. Stay at home and stay safe.